I love vintage O-ring style G.I. Joe figures. The form factor, articulation and joint structure of them are just so charming, I can't help but adore them. Yes, even you, Ice Cream Soldier, you're my number one. I've actually recently been purchasing quite a few figures over the past couple of months, and one of them has been this fine specimen. This is a Black Major reproduction Cobra Trooper, done up in good guy SAS colours. A bloke from Greece listed a bunch of his figures up on Facebook Marketplace recently, and I snapped them up for a pretty decent deal. He was packaged up, made his way from Athens to Victoria in a couple of weeks, rapidly unboxed, and... I discovered his joints were a touch... buggered. Not a problem, I thought. I'll just tighten this lad up. And while I'm at it, I'll teach the five people watching this video how to effectively tighten theirs, too. So, let's get into it! Ah! Schnip, schnip. Ah, 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 yeah. To tighten the most integral joints, the neck, shoulders, hips and knees, we're going to have to take apart the toy. For that, you're going to need a screwdriver. This one was from a cheap screwdriver set from Daiso, which has three sizes of two bit types, flathead and phillips head. The one you're going to need is the red double zero phillips size, as I found that it's the perfect head size to avoid screw strippage. I stupidly used the orange size here. Don't do that. You're going to run the risk of stripping those screws bad. If you don't have a Daiso near you, then you can easily find a screwdriver online. If you go to eBay, then there's hundreds of G.I. Joe repair kits available, with brand new rubber bands, T-hooks, screws, and most importantly, a screwdriver. With the screwdriver in hand, you can easily unscrew the small Phillips head screw inside the back of the toy. Make sure to put it somewhere safe. Then simply wedge apart the figure. Twist the head, and the figure should explode because G.I. Joe is the most volatile action figures known to man. Unthread the rubber O-ring from inside his pelvis, remove it, and put it aside as well. That is, if it's still in good nick. If it's lost its elasticity, deformed, or worse, rotted away, then make sure to grab another to replace it. Just search for G.I. Joe O-Ring online, and you can easily find some new ones in bulk for really cheap. The legs are connected by a small metal bar with a hook on them, and this can also get pretty loose if the tension from the O-Ring is failing you. Unscrew the screws on his inner thighs, and they'll come apart just as easily as the body. And as always, make sure to put the screws and the T-hook in a safe place. Now for the actual I've seen people use stuff like Teflon tape, which is just either going to cause stress on the plastic or gum up the joints from my experience, or clear nail polish, which just... no. But the most effective method I've come across, and the one that I use the most, uses this stuff. This is another Daiso special. Brush type super glue. I like using it because it gives you more control of what you're doing, and marginally decreases the chance of you gluing yourself to the part. Marginally. Take the super glue and brush a small layer onto the places you want to tighten. For example, I want to build up more resistance on the shoulders and neck, so I just apply a coat onto the neck of the figure, as well as the torso's shoulder hole thingies. Make sure to do both sides so there's an even amount of resistance. If your figure doesn't have this swivel neck and instead has a ball joint like Firefly over here, then just apply a layer onto the actual ball of the neck. I'd suggest elevating the head on something like an O-ring as well, just so the glue doesn't touch your work surface and bond itself there permanently. For the swivel arm battle grip and various riveted hinge joints, I don't recommend using the super glue on them unless you're very diligent and make sure the parts don't sit too long. Unless you really want to make a straight arm figure. Instead, I use something different. Vallejo Gloss Varnish. Squeeze a small amount onto the joint you want to tighten, move it around so the inside gets a nice coat, wipe the excess away with a cotton bud or your finger, and let it sit for a little bit before moving again and reapplying if need be. The knees are a little bit different than the arms. There's a small plastic pin on the upper leg running through the lower leg, allowing for a knee bend. Take the leg apart and thicken the pin, or hole, your choice, with super glue. For the hip movement, just add some super glue on the inside thigh piece, the one with the exposed screw hole, since that's the part that makes the most contact with the metal bar. Then wait for all that glue to cure. If you reassemble the figure and there's still a touch of looseness, then reapply another thin layer. Remember to not add too much. You don't want to end up fusing your joints. And when that's all done, it's time for reassembly. Reassembly is by far the most difficult part. It's not hard, but more annoying. 
to quote the craftsman, you gotta hold your tongue in the right way. Place the lower leg back inside the thigh piece for both legs, making sure you know which is the left and which is the right, by the way. And place the T-hook back inside the thigh piece. Ooh, look at that! You can already feel the resistance! Thread the O-ring onto the T-hook and f Nice! As I was saying, fish it through the pelvis piece. Next, take the back half of the torso and loop the rubber band onto the post that runs through the center. It might could want to fight you on this, so sandwich the front and back together to prevent that. Finally, my method for getting the arms and head on is... kinda brute forcing it. I personally split the top of the torso apart just a bit with my fingernail, and slide the mushroom peg of the shoulder in at an angle, sliding it in all the way before closing the torso again to secure it. Same goes with the head. Finally, screw it all together nice and tight, and bask in the glory of your new creation. The SAS Trooper is now ready to go and kick some Cobra with the rest of his G.I. Joe teammates. By the way, if you attempt this on a Ninja Force Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat figure, I'm not liable for any deaths you can cause out of rage. <laughs>